have been very interesting few months man for music um, for the bike scene um, being part of the bike scene I think that's the most uh, crazy part for me because um, in Georgia in Georgia we were just man everybody had their crews bro like, everybody was so segregated um, and it was like more of those exclusive or whatever type of deals, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was never like what we're doing out here with, you know, the bikes. I see that like, you know, you're a dad and you want to like take care of your family by doing what you love and following your ambitions and like, yes, I appreciate the fuck out of that and I don't think that shit gets put on enough. You know, nah, it's, man. Always, it's always about the clout and the money and shit, but exactly. you know, it's like, People be doing that for different reasons. You know, everyone just wants to go party and fuck a bunch of chicks. But exactly, you know, yeah. <laughs> take, take care of your family and shit. That's that's something that completely like, different. I think that's the most one of the most gangster shit a man can do or a parent can do. A woman. Um, see, initially growing up, bro, like I didn't have that example though. That's what makes it, I think, a little bit more powerful for myself. Um, to be able to realize like damn you know growing up my mom was always working i'm not gonna ever say that my mom was a bad mom she wasn't a bad mom my mom was just more so fixated on working hard 25 8 you know yeah she missed a lot of holidays like we had uh family businesses and stuff like that so uh she wouldn't be around for holidays she wouldn't like she'll miss like particular like um like little events like sporting events like football games or fucking violin recitals and shit like that you know what i'm saying yeah so uh when that happened growing up as a kid you're like fuck like 
why aren't my parents like all these other parents like why can't my mom be there you know yeah. what i'm saying like no, right. that whole daddy's uh daddy's boy or daddy's whatever the fuck um, yeah. uh, mama's, mama's boy or some shit like that yeah. i couldn't even have that terminology even if i wanted to just because she was working too hard you know what i'm saying I'm like i give her kudos for that because my mom endured a lot of bullshit to even be able to you know take care of the shit that she did on the spectrum that she did you know yeah so respect to her more power to her but everything that she kind of like didn't do definitely taught me how to be the best parent i can for this little monster right here and um honestly bro like it's, i will say that it does get hard iris iris you see john but um it gets hard, bro. Like for sure. Um, mainly because I look at other parents. I look at I look at other families, and I look at my daughter, and I'm like, fuck. You know, I don't want her to grow up and having those same questions. Iris, we gotta keep the door closed, okay? Don't keep it open like that, all right, Mama? Close it. But um, I think the hardest part about being a parent without having parents is to know that, man, when she gets older, I'm gonna have to have that talk, and she's gonna ask me like, you know, Dad, where's your like, where's my grandma on your side, you know, or shit, I don't know what to say, you know what I'm saying? Like, other than keep it real with her and let her know like we don't have like the best relationship. But she's like she's just loving from a distance. Yeah. It's just one of those situations where she has to love from a distance. And it's kinda crazy. You gotta watch your stink, baby. It's kinda crazy just because like man I don't know how that's gonna turn out for her. You know what I'm saying? Like who knows? She might feel the way that I do about certain things. Iris, I need you to stop, baby girl. Go watch your tap tap. Please. Yes, and you can eat, eat that one, okay? Your snacks. But I think the hardest part is like growing up with her and making her realize like, yeah, you know, like my mom might have not been there, but I would never not be there. You know what I'm saying? Like I won't have that same position as they did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh, yeah. And uh like being black and Korean is kind of like crazy because like the Korean side is oh you need to go to school man you need to da 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 you yeah. need to be a doctor I bet that's a crazy dichotomy bro that shit's annoying as fuck bro like because you can become a doctor right it's not enough like you need to da -da do this 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 and the third and I mean I'm a legal medical assistant. I went to school, that was the first thing I did when I got out here in Colorado. And just seeing how like certain things happened with the whole COVID and just how doctors were and just conversations that we're having away from patients and stuff like, it kind of really put me on tilt and made it so like I couldn't, it's not something like a department that I could really work with. Yeah. You see um, things from a different perspective. Yeah, bro, it was kind of crazy. Like going to school for it, like, Imagine going to school and we're hearing about COVID and then all of a sudden they're telling you like, you know, uh, so in class they're telling us, hey, you know, why we shouldn't and why it's too fast and this is in the third. A couple months later, hey guys, we need you guys to get the vaccine or you're not going to be able to finish school or you're not going to be able to do this. How did you like go from all that to like music? Like, was it just kind of like a natural progression for you of like, you know, listening to music? figuring out want to do like do your own shit with it so and like, counselor, I guess, and like where do you want to take that in the future um so when i was in like elementary school i had like a counselor because uh, i got caught to, uh, i was in some they were trying to get me taking over my parents and trying to make me say some stupid shit and the counselor that i was talking to she kind of like um helped me put it into words, like how I was really feeling about like what they were trying to do. Iris, thank you. But uh, so literature, like writing and stuff, is always like 
dope to me just because like people can like create their own stories they can create their own narratives they can you know but uh poems was like where everything like initially started yeah. and then i was told like how you can pretty much a song is a poem you know and after that uh, fast forward i ended up getting put into like a group poem and uh Dude, that was kind of like our mentor. He was like also doing stuff in studios and stuff like that. So he gave us like certain, uh, what was it, like an iPhone and uh, some headphones, some other shit. And we were like, yeah, if you can make a song off of this, then you know you'll be ready to like take it to the next and adapt. You know, you gotta start somewhere. So it kind of like. Uh, forced us to pretty much put that mindset like if this is really what you want to do you figure it out and um, that's exactly what we did it's kind of weird but I had me myself my boy Coop and another homie Kwame we we're all in a group home and then shit we started finding instrumentals and we did a couple talent shows in the group home I liked it uh, shit, we went our separate ways for a while just because, you know, the group home shit. And when I got out of the group home, I kind of got in some trouble and was locked up for a little bit. And me being locked up for that time frame, it made me kind of like, what else can I do, you know? So I just sat there. Bro, I wrote, I was here for a year and wrote 10 composition books of just lyrics and poems and shit. Yeah. And uh, like, you know, those drunk nights, you know, everybody like freestyles at parties and shit like that, but like everybody used to tell me like, you know, bro, you're good, like, bro, that shit's fire. I'm young, I'm thinking like, my friends are supposed to think this shit's cool, you know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as time progressed, they don't believe me. As time progressed, I realized like, yo, I'm actually pretty decent at this shit, you know? Kind of had a better liking to it. My mom actually kind of listened because, like, I was saying some real personal shit. And, you know, shit became who I was. I went from Chino Green to fucking foreign to foreign logic. And as far as, like, where I want to take this, man, I just had this talk with Johnny a couple days ago. There's a lot of shit that I did growing up that I probably am, like, I never see the people that I hurt, you know, or possibly impacted their life in a negative way, you know what I'm saying? You need to stop, please. And now that I finally have, like, a platform and a voice to, you know, actually do things, give back, uh, set things up with Johnny, like the bike rides and um, pretty much the, the the handouts and stuff like that. Like it kind of put me in a better position to tell myself like, hey, look, yeah, you had a past, everybody has a past, um, but now you have a platform and a way to like give back to the community that you felt like you harmed, you know? And try to lead by example instead of being that kind of like chaotic mind and causing so much of a havoc and nuisance to your community. Um, I mean, that's, 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 the, that's the best way to, you know, I guess like provide value to the world is just lead by example, do your shit. Oh yeah, like, and, bro. And people see that and get inspired by that and motivated to, you know, kind of. And that's what I'm hoping to do, man. I, like, I know this little one, like, I can show you, bro, I can, I can literally play like the song that we did for the uh, music video for uh, with teammates and stuff like that. Bro, I shit you not, I can literally play that song. This little girl would go crazy, you know? And when I first saw that, I was kind of like, oh, you know, daddy's little girl, you feel me? But nah, bro, like this is literally every single time the song gets played, yeah. it's She'll, she'll literally drop what she'll doing. She'll jump off the bed. She'll start dancing. She'll start chilling. Whatever the case may be. And um, I'm also seeing like my music is also bringing people together. My music is brought 
certain people to look at teammate a little bit differently too. Like them, teammates trying to just not just part of, be part of the black community, but try to bring some other fun shit to the scene too, and collectively bring it together and make everybody a part of it, not just solo people out like, oh, this person, he stunts better, so he's gonna be in the video. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there is no, oh, this person's better. Yeah. Like, and that's one thing that stood out to me because, bro, like, I've been seeing teammates since, like, COVID time, but, yeah. man, like, How'd you get, like, how'd you kind of get into that? I mean, even as, like, somebody who, like, doesn't have a bike, I mean, like... Uh, so, personally, like, not personally, let me rephrase that. So, it all really started, like, around COVID. When we first was out here, freaking, um... This is so weird. But, um, one day, bro, we had to go to, like, the doctor's office, man. And, like, there was a big-ass crowd of, like, bikes, man. And it blocked the highway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, but, like, as time goes on, I don't think it was actually Team 8. I think it was actually another crew that, because Team 8 don't do that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the riders that have been with Team 8, bro, they don't, like, they don't stop people from getting on to, like, highways or stop people from, you know what I'm saying? They stop people at like particular lights from people being dickheads and just trying to run yeah. people over. You know what I'm no, saying? No, we try and like, try and keep traffic going keep as, traffic much as, possible. Going as much as possible. You yeah. feel me? So like, when I first saw that, I was like, man, damn, like, around the COVID times, I was like, yeah, whoever these fucking bikes, like, whoever they were, they were like dickheads because we really had to get to the house. And, uh, but when I saw that, I was like, bro, I've never seen that in Colorado. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, what the fuck is that? Dude, the, yeah, dude, the Denver bike life scene is growing like crazy, man. Like, it was weird as hell. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, in, like I said, like, in Georgia, we have, like, the car and bike scene, but it's more so, like, man, it's not until, like, recent, like, a couple years now, you know what I'm saying, that I see people in Georgia really doing the shit that they're doing, like, out here. You know what I mean? Like, or out there in California, you know what I'm saying, where they just... Man, stunt, they do that burnout, they fucking, you know what I'm saying? They come out as a whole community, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's the cool shit about it. So, <clears throat> once I started like really getting focused with my music and stuff again, and like finding myself, uh, my manager and I were talking about the song uh, Fuego, and pretty much like I wanted that song to be like the first song that like kind of like popped out. And while we were listening to the song, we were trying to figure out a video idea, a video concept, you know, and you also wanted me to help me figure out, like, my image, you know, what I wanted to stand for, you know, and how are we going to present this to, like, other, like, brands, you know what I'm saying? Like, how are you going to brand yourself, exactly? And, uh, walked into 420, bro, and, uh, I had to get some fucking rounds. <laughs> and it just so happened that teammate was having a fucking meet. You know what I'm saying? Like they just finished with a ride so that their body was gonna go just chill at 420, yeah. you know? And uh, I was like, man, yo, this is dope. Cause I already tried to like, talk was it, to and this was like back like a couple months ago, like September, yeah. August. Like around that yeah, time dude, that, Yeah, we were popping out like every Friday night. Like that shit everybody was, was out. That know? was like, we were just trying to get as much riding in before the before this shit. This shit, exactly. And it was crazy as hell to me, bro. Cause like, I'm like, yo, found you again. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we ran into each other again. Iris, you gotta put that down before you break it. Yeah, you don't want to break it. Uncle's gonna be very upset. Yeah, so put it back, please. Yep. Thank you, good girl. But uh, so we walked into the gas station, bro, and I'm just like looking around because I already got kind of like discouraged. I talked to a couple other people, uh, a couple other groups and stuff like that, and they were like, yeah, but because they really didn't follow through it, never really followed through yeah. it. So I was kind of just like, what the heck, man, you know? Like, a fucking deadline, I'm panicking at this point. And then uh, I just, I put it, put it back, back. Yes. But um, they were just like, uh, what was it? So I was getting discouraged just because of the whole concept of like, man, these people weren't falling through. And then, uh, shit, I kind of went on a fucking limb and I was like, hey, like, 
So what is it that you guys do? Like, are you guys like, is this a crew? Like, what is it? And like, oh man, we're a big ass team, bro. Like, and uh, said, yeah, you're that. You can you're down to join us whenever. You know, I was like, what? Like, yeah, bro. Like, I introduce you to you know Johnny. Like, Who's Johnny? Oh yeah, he helps like run the events and stuff like that. And I was like, that's dope. I was like, yeah, man. I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to get a music video together, and I would love to have y'all into it. Like, have everybody in the video. You know this. This would be perfect, you know what I mean? Like, um, you guys would help out with the image and stuff like that. And I, li I like, literally it was just one conversation. The next conversation was Johnny, like, them taking me out to see Johnny. Johnny was just like, yeah, bro, like, uh, come to this meet, you know? And that was the very first meet that I ever went to. It was over there in, uh, uh going towards downtown, uh, in a sense. But that one gas station right there on the yeah, corner, yeah, there's the another gas station. Yes. Yeah, 450? Man, yeah. bro. That was the first ride, and, like, what? it touched my heart, bro. Like, it's so, because I brought my girl, I brought my daughter out, and uh, everybody was just so welcoming, bro. Like, yeah. the hospitality was amazing. Iris, don't you do it. <laughs> but the hospitality was just amazing, you know what I'm saying? And I just... Man, that shit was a really dark time for me, man. You know? So, to be able to be welcome into something by open arm, you know? And just to see how positive it was. Yeah, like, that shit changed the whole concept of, like, this is, this is what the video has to be. Yeah. You know, like... There's a the nice meaning behind yeah, it. Yeah, there's like a legit meaning. Like, yeah. what the fuck? It's mm -hmm. not just motorcycle riding. Yeah, it's like, like community. This is a real life community of, oh. of, I can't even say a team. Like, yeah, a team is a family, but this is a, like a legitimate family, you know? Iris, may you please sit down? Thank you. But, um, it, it just really blew my fucking mind, bro. And it's what helped create the whole imagery for the video. Like, a lot of people in teammate that were not able to come to the ride have no idea. Iris, no, no. That's a camera. You can't touch the camera. You can Maybe wave. Later. Okay, you can wave, but not right now, okay, honey? You crazy girl. But, um, it helped paint the brand. Like, legitimately. Yeah. Um, we were already kind of like on the verge of like, man, what can we do to give back, you know? But like, teaming up with teammate and actually becoming part of teammate, it changed everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, it made everything solid. Me and Johnny been communicating about a lot of stuff. We got you now, we have Mio and I freaking teaming up and just a lot of stuff that we're trying to get in the works now. And honestly, bro, like, I'm excited for people to see what this video is going to bring, you know? Like, they're going to see, like, shit. Wait, there's a black community in Colorado? Yo, wait, teammate, why are they acting like sponsors, bro? Like, what the fuck is this? It's not an act, though. It's not an act at all. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> On water? Can you just ask for it? Why did you have to do that, crazy? Well, I think like one of the coolest things though is like in the stunt community, there's not like, I mean, it's it's a lot like kind of like the skateboard community back in the day it was like, there's not a whole lot of like backing behind anything. You know, you have like certain, certain teams and certain brands like Icon or whatever that sponsor riders and you have the pro riders, but like, I think it's so cool to just see like, a group of riders that like there's no like like we don't have to worry about certain like all the like corporate shit it's just yeah. like nah it's just like a community of people that yourself. love that love bikes and want to like create like a, a positive impact in the community yeah. and just like have kind of like a, a foundation of shit that so that it's like not all like divided and scattered it's like okay even if we're all at different lots or whatever this is we're all teammates you know and like everybody's all like about the same shit and like we kind of like denounce the 
all the like dumb fuckery that you know that comes into like, it sometimes. Yeah, I mean, there's like, unfortunately, one of, like one of the things with like being in in bike life is like you do kind of get a, a like a, a bit of a target painted on your back sometimes. You know, people steal bikes all the time. And you always hear about it, especially in like cities oh, like yeah. Chicago or whatever. Like kids get. Kids get shot up for their fucking dirt bikes, you know. Yeah, dude. And having like just such a like a a, a, a positive like well mannered group of people that are all just trying to like progress the sport and progress each other is like so cool to see. You know? Oh yeah. And like even like just like the community as a whole, like grow like Denver and, and you know help out like everybody, you know, from 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 the creatives, from the the stunt riders to to like the business owners. And shit like that, like all that shit. And it's crazier to me because like, it's crazier to me because it's like, people look at, people think of when they see Colorado, right? And I can, I can say I was one of those people. When I first saw, like, thought about Colorado, I was like, oh, we go we better. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they got mountains. I could go snowboarding. You know, like I did that shit when I was in uh, Seattle, Mount Rainier, that shit was dope as hell, you know? But like, nobody really thinks about, you know, other shit other than weed and fucking mountains and touristy shit yeah. for Colorado. But if people took the time, like, shit, you might come for a fucking vacation just for like a couple of days, and let's just say you come on a fucking Friday night, you might see us you riding see around, shit? just yeah. like, Deep that's memorable. Hell. That's, you know, that's, a, head, you know? that's something that, bro, you probably have your kids in the backseat of the car like, yeah. Yo, Dad, Mom! Well, dude, like, that's, the, that's the coolest feeling in the world. When you're like in, in traffic, whatever, you're with the fucking boys, or even when you're just like by yourself. And like, you roll up next to like, uh, you know, a family, and like, of course, you know, there's, there's like the caring mom or dad that's just like kind of disapproving. But you see the kids in the bag, and you're like, fuck, I gotta pop it up for this. Yeah, thing. no, you know? just for the kids, bro. Yeah, and, and then, and then, like, to, to think that like there might be a butterfly effect associated with that, where maybe ten years down the line, when that kid is like 16 and gets his license, like, yeah, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a bike. You get a bike. Yeah, and then to make it crazier, it's like. What I like about Team Night is the fact that on Sunday, you know what I'm saying? Like some Sundays or whatever, they have the lot. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, bro, like, imagine a new skateboarder. Oh. Barely knows how to, like, pop a, uh, pop a ollie or whatever, right? Yeah. And doesn't know how to grind, no nothing. You know what I mean? And he's scared as shit because obviously when you fall, it's embarrassing. Yeah. You know? Like, you obviously want to get back up, right? But you got kids who are more experienced. They're going to snicker, laugh, fucking talk their shit or whatever. So it makes a uncomfortable environment for what you love, right? Yeah. But then, for instance, bro, it was a while since I rode a bike. Like, a while. Like, I haven't rode a bike since Seattle. In Seattle, I wasn't, I was there when I was like 14, I think 15. Around that time frame, and uh, my mom's ex-husband taught me how to ride, but I didn't really like hold on to it because me and him didn't have like the greatest like relationship. You know what I'm saying? So like, I don't know. I went to the lot and, and the, the what was it? It was on a Sunday. We were doing like they had the taco truck out there to uh, help one of the homies that fell or something like that. Or he had like hospital bills or something like that. Oh, Tony? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, no, I don't. I know Tony was there, but I don't know if it was mainly based off of that. Whoever. Oh man. Yeah, so I remember Tony. I remember Tony went down hard. Yes. Yes, he did. But this was a. This was a little bit after. I think he even rode that rode while he was hurting, man. Like he was a soldier. He, he that's how you. That's that's like, how you distinguish the people who, who really just love it. They love the game, you know. And um, like he, uh, we had one one lot meet man where we had uh, a taco truck out there. It was on a Sunday. We had a taco truck out there, but the people who ran the taco truck, their family, one of the Irish stop, one of the uh, family members. Uh, 
I guess they needed some help with like some medical bills and stuff like that. So like all of the money for that we spent for the tacos and stuff like that, it all went to like the medical bills, right? Um, but it was on that particular day, bro, that um, man, I was just watching everybody. I was like, bro, I want to ride, man. You know, I was like, man, I gotta get a bike soon. Yeah. And this is in the third, and one of the homies was like, bro, you know how to ride? He's like, you don't know how to ride, like, manual? I was like, with a car, yeah, you know, but like, with a bike, no. Nah. And, um, he was like, well, hop on. I was like, wait, what? He was like, hop on. Yeah. He was like, well, you keep talking about wanting to get a bike, you're not going to learn without getting on it. Yeah. And I was like, ah, got me. <laughs> yeah. So, fuck, get me, he's got me, and he was like, all right, so look, you know, what you going to do? All right, cool. You just go for it, man. And that's exactly what the fuck I did. And, uh, shit. Surprisingly, I did not end up staying in the little small area that yeah, I was yeah, saying yeah. that I was yep. going to do. Yep. I ended up getting in the line, and I was like, fuck it. I'm <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. This is what you guys are feeling when you... All right. Yeah. This is what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I loved it. Like, I fucking loved it. And then, uh... Uh, the homie Jared, he fucking let us fucking get on his bikes and stuff like that outside of uh, like we went up to his crib and shit like that and bro, we rode and I actually got the practice in and well, I was uh, I felt comfortable enough to ride a Grom on Taco Tuesday. Yeah. And shit, rode that whole ride. It's so fun, dude. It's, bro. It's, that's a different, it's a different <laughs> level of just like mental clarity, dude. Yes. Johnny and I were talking about it and it, like, uh, Johnny's kind of like phrase that he uses a lot is uh, motorcycles as medicine. Yes. And that was like one of the things I kind of wanted to like, uh, one of the phrases I really wanted to use in like kind of this like series of interviews is like, like motorcycles like really are like medicine for people and like, I, I, don't, that I sure. don't think people really like, understand that yeah like people who've never been on a bike before they just don't they don't get it man it's like yeah all there's there's like you have to fucking pay attention it's like if you, you can't be thinking about all the other shit because if, you, if you're fucking distracted in your fucking head you're gonna die like you know so it's it just like it lets yes. all that shit just yes. out, out, you know, and it's it's such like on the road in yourself and yes. the wind, bro. Yeah, and people people be like, you know, people always love to like hate on bikes, but I really do feel like it's like kind of like the skateboard scene where it's like people are gonna hate on it for now, but then you know they see this, hey, there's a lot of money to be made here. I just feel know? like it's the wrong shit to hate on. Like my thing about it is like this, you know, everybody has a reason to hate on some bullshit, you know. Oh, absolutely, but like. You know, oh, we don't like the bike community because it's they have no respect illegal. for the road. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I was like, well, sh I mean, it's fun. You know, stop, baby. You got cops that I got. The first time I got pulled over on the bike <laughs> was when I was with Jared and uh, dude. He wasn't a dick about it. I can yeah. honestly say that. He yeah. was honestly just like, look, man. I didn't even want to come talk to y'all about this shit, but like, you know, you got people in, around here, they don't always feel the same, but I used to have a bike, what is this from? You know, this isn't a third man, I used to love yeah. riding that shit, it was like, you know, just You try. gotta love the cops like that, dude. Yeah, but yeah. I, I couldn't, you know, what the fuck can I say to that? Yeah. Like, fuck you, no, no. Nah. <laughs> not at all. Hey, appreciate that shit. Yeah. Like, I can't tell you I'm not gonna get back on this fucking bike. But I appreciate the heads up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, like you made a start. You know, that's just really like that's just really yeah. all that shit was at that point. Yeah, dude. Fuck and uh, it's a great, it's a great experience because it's like you know they don't even want to do that shit. Like out here, at least, but they don't even want to fucking give you all the time. You know what I'm saying? I think from what I see. I think like at least in it, I mean like kind of in my part of like in my part of Denver like of course it's like white suburbia and shit they got yeah. nothing better yeah. to do she was like a castle rock when I got they, put over in the yeah park. they got nothing better to do dog they're like alright cool yeah there's a kid on my side pull that motherfucker over and the cops are usually chill with it but it's like you know, the way I think of it, they probably just get like, you know, a heads up from their supervisor, like a meeting up from their supervisor, like the first, you know, on Monday morning, like, hey, we, we keep getting a bunch of calls about these bikes, so you guys gotta crack down on these bikes, and these guys are like, these officers are just like, alright, cool, whatever, they're just doing their job, you know, it's like, 
This sucks. And, and I mean, it's, it's part of the game. Like, uh, unfortunately, right now, I mean, hopefully that changes in the future, but like, as for right now, it's like, all right, cool, you know, the cops, that's, that's, their, that's, their, that's their job. You know, their, their job is to fucking, you know, their job is to catch us and our job is to not get caught, you know? Exactly. And, and I think like, I think every city has like a, a nice, uh, or not nice, but a certain relationship with the cops. Yeah. You know, and and so like you go to different cities, some cops will just be like, you know, they might just like flash the lights at you if you're popping a wheelie or whatever. They're just yeah. like, hey, just you know, they're not they're not gonna chase you or nothing. They're just saying, hey, cool it. Be careful. And that's cool. <laughs> like absolutely like they like I will respect that so much more than the cops that try to like run motherfuckers over. I'm like. But like, what do you expect at that point? point? Yeah, I'm you like, I'm saying? like, at that point, nobody's gonna respect you because like, that's, like, that's, that's, that's a person in the car. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like, okay, if his eyes be chased, possibly, but like nine times out of ten, you're not gonna fucking put you over a car unless there was actually like real hurt caused. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you're over here trying to fucking run people off the fucking bike because one, they're having fun, or oh, he doesn't have a tag on his bike. Yeah, well, shit. a lot of cops yeah. they don't even they just like don't chase because what they're worried about is uh and j just as like a human being you know it's like more injured, if yeah. you like I saw I saw a clip of a cop who was talking about a story where he uh, he lit up a dude on like a Jixxer 1000 the dude takes off and the cop like he like didn't even chase him he was just ch just kind of like following behind with his lights on just kind of yeah. like letting people almost like just letting people know hey yeah there's a there's, there's a cop rocket right. coming yeah you know and dude fucking kills himself ra wraps his bike around the tree and then the cop is like you know this poor dude is like fuck you know I, he feels some sort of responsibility towards that so i think what a lot of cops do is like when they see a, a dude on a bike with no plate they're just like i'm not even gonna Bother, because I, I don't want that that on my conscience, you know, and, and I don't know. There's I mean, there's a couple different ways you can look at that, but yeah. you know, I mean, it's yeah. The cop situation is always just like it's an ongoing. It's always like an ongoing relationship, you know. It's not mama. It's not mommy. I know. I'm sorry. I know. I let you call mommy after we're finished.